In this tutorial video, we're going to have a look at the laws of logarithms and how to use these to solve logarithmic equations. So before we start, it helps to write down all the laws of logarithms. So that, and in any question to do with the laws of logarithms, I would advise you to do this to write all three laws of logarithms down, just so you've got them in front of you, so you know which ones to use. So the first one, the addition rule, log to the base a of x plus log to the base a of y adding two logs together where we can multiply the contents log to the base a of xy we've got the subtraction rule log to the base a of x take log to the base a of y equals log to the base a of x over y and finally the power rule so log to the base a of x to the power of y equals y log to the base a of x so that power the y jumps to the front so now having a look at the questions it says given that log to the base a of x equals p and log to the base a of y equals q express the following in terms of q so a part one log to the base a of xy well, notice we can use the addition rule in reverse. We've got a product of two logarithms, so we can separate them out into additions. So that becomes log to the base a of x plus log to the base a of y, which is equal to p plus q. Part two, log to the base a of a squared x cubed over y. Well, notice we've got a product here and a division. So we separate that out, so log to the base a of a squared x cubed over y. So the product, we can separate out using the addition rule, that becomes log to the base a of a squared plus log to the base a of x cubed. And then we can take log to the base a of y. So we're, there we've got the product, and there we've got the division okay equals and log to the base a of a squared is just two that says what power do we give a to get a squared we give it the power two so here we can use the power rule so that power the x cubed the cube part can jump to the front take three log to the base a of x take log to the base a of y equals 2 take well we know from before that log to the base a of x is just p so that becomes 3p take we know log to the base a of y is q so take q okay so having done that b part 1 express log to the base 10 of x squared minus 10 minus log to the base 10 of x as a single logarithm notice we've got a subtraction here so that subtraction there causes a division within the logarithms. So using the subtraction rule, log to the base 10 of x squared minus 10 over x. And that's the one mark gained from b part 1. Finally, b part 2. Moving over to the other side of the page. b part 2. Hence solve the equation log to the base 10 of x squared minus 10. Take log to the base 10 of x equals 2 log to the base 10 of 3. Well, the left-hand side here, notice that that's something that we simplified in a previous part. In B part 1, we simplified that into a single logarithm, so it makes sense to use that form of it now. So log to the base 10 of x squared minus 10 over x equals, and the right-hand side here, we can simplify using the power rule. This 2 can jump into the power of 3, so that becomes log to the base 10 of 3 squared. Log to the base 10 of 3 squared. Well, 3 squared is 9. Okay, so now we're ready to remove the logarithms from both sides. Technically, we remove the logarithms by doing 10 to the power of each side. So 10 to the power of the left-hand side. Log to the base 10 of x squared minus 10 over x equals... 10 to the power of log to the base 10 of 9 
So this statement here, log to the base 10 of that, means what power do I give 10 to get x squared minus 10 over x? Whatever the answer is, I then give that power to 10. We can see we've done that here. To get x squared minus 10 over x. Likewise, what power do I give 10 to get 9? That's what log to the base 10 of something means. So what power do I get, give 10 to get 9? Then I give 10 that power to get 9. Rearranging a little bit, this implies that if I times both sides by x, x squared minus 10 equals 9x. Rearranging that into a quadratic form, a solvable quadratic form, I get x squared minus 9x minus 10 equals 0. And either factorising or just simply putting in the quadratic solver on our calculator, I'll go for factorising x minus 10 x plus 1 equals 0. This means that x equals 10 or x equals minus 1. Now often in these questions they'll try and catch you out by giving you an invalid solution. There is such an invalid solution here. If we substitute x equals minus 1 into the original equation, we see from this term here, the log to the base 10 of x, log to the base 10 of minus 1 doesn't exist, it's undefined, we can't take logs of a negative number, therefore this solution is invalid, leaving just x equals 10 as the only solution. For more videos like this, go to alevelmathsrevision.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel.